Okay, so next I want to show you how to take your laser and flip it around so that you can use it to get some fun motifs, maybe in a block, maybe as an all over design. Um, just a different way to show you how to work from the front of your machine with your laser, as opposed to following just a pantograph or something on the back. I love doing things like this because when I was doing quilt for a little boy way before I knew what I was doing and um, before I had a computerized machine, I can't remember if it was in this book or not, um, there was like, I found a single line drawing, like a color sheet of a knight with a sword and a shield. And I made that so I, you take an image, right? So you can get a coloring sheet or you can take an image. This is a book I bought a long time ago. I'm sure it's still available somewhere for probably pretty cheap. It's called 501 Quilting Motifs. Um, it has a lot of different block designs, all over designs, things that you can use for a border. And so you can take this and it even gives you like different ways that you can use that motif, which I think is really awesome. But you can take this and scan it, or I guess make a copy of it. When you make a copy of it, you can tell it to enlarge by a percentage or to shrink by a percentage. So I'm going to be using the apple. So I'm going to be using this apple, but I took it and I put it on my copy machine and I made it 70% of the original size so that I could fit it. So you can see how this apple is a lot smaller than that apple. What I'm going to do next, um, some long arm machines, you can get like an acrylic base that'll sit up as a tabletop. In that case, it's super easy to put this heavy book on top of that and then follow that with the laser light. I don't want to put this heavy book on my quilt to make it sag or drag in any areas. So using the paper by itself is the perfect method. So I'm going to show you how to stabilize the paper and line up your uh, laser light on it so that you can then put that design into a quilting block on your quilt. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to kind of loosen up my laser. I had my laser. Um, set up to point right at where my needle is going to be, but I no longer need to follow my needle. I need to follow this design. So what I'm going to do is loosen it up. There's a little notch on it where you can loosen it up and then you can push on that to then release the, the hole to enlarge it to release your laser. Then you can kind of put your laser on the other side. So now that it's showing all over on your draw sheet, then you can attach it back to your laser post so that it's now facing the other direction. Okay, depending on where you need it to face, you may need to adjust because of how big the, um, the power cord is, right? So now that I know where my laser's pointing, so in case you cannot see in the video, I hate that you can't see it with a light. See this dot here? That's my laser light. So. I want to do a couple of things to test to make sure that it's all gonna line up just right. One, take your apple and put it in your quilt block and see if it fits within your quilt block. Usually you're gonna measure your quilt block so that you can then make sure to print out your apple in the right size. So the next thing we wanna do is find the edge of our quilt block on either side, which is here and here. And I wanna make sure that my apple is centered. So if I go all the way to the edge of my apple, and follow that, will I go out of my block? I will not, okay? So if you feel like your apple is center, then you can pin it here. Once you have your paper in the right place, I would pin it so that it doesn't bounce, it doesn't move, and it doesn't accidentally mess you up, okay? And if you're worried about your long arm machine bouncing, you can always put a little weight at the top and the bottom to try to minimize the, the bounce that you get from your paper. If this is bubbling up, just take a third one and mark it right in the middle just to hold it down where it should be. In my block, I'm going to start at um, the leaf of the apple where I can kind of do all of the designs and then finish off my apple all in the same place before I go to my worm. And so I've tacked off my threads, and now what I'm going to do is as I'm stitching, I'm going to follow this laser light on the paper. That's what I'm going to pay attention to because I've already, um, hopefully I didn't move my paper, but I've already made sure that it fits in my quilt block, both long and short ways. And I've got my stitch regulator on. Okay, and 
tack off your threads. And you can see I've got a little apple and a leaf. And I did not follow it honestly as best as I, as I should have. But every time I do this, I'm going to get a little better and better every time. And so, you know, each apple will get better with practice, but this is one of the better ways to kind of do something that looks like a computer did it, but really you're just building muscle memory and you're developing your skill. And you're able to do something without the use of a computer. Instead, you're using your laser that came with your APQS machine, right? And now with this little apparatus on the side, you're able to go ahead and do little things like this um, with a greater degree of certainty than it had you mounted it from the top of your machine. Okay, so now we're going to start our worm at his neck. Okay, then we're going to follow him around. Alrighty. I probably could have planned that a little bit better, but you can see my little worm coming out through the apple now. So that is another cool way that you can use um, the f this uh, front mounted laser holder on your APQS machine. So I wanted to show you two cool ways that you could use that. I'm sure there are multiple applications and different ways that you can do this, um, but this is just a fun, uh, easy way to, to get some good, consistent results without the use of a computer, but with a single line drawing that you can get from like a coloring book, or if you get one of those um, 501 quilting motifs, there's a couple different versions of that with a lot of different motifs in there and a lot of examples like I was showing you how to put them together. So a single fish, you could do a row of fish, you could put them in a block. So I love that it kind of gives you different orientations as well. Um, and I'll put a link to that in the bottom video. I'll find it on Amazon and, and, and add it to the video for y'all. So I hope that you enjoyed this and if you're on the fence about getting a front end laser holder, um, consider getting one. It's only 20 bucks and it adds so much more to the level of detail that you can do with your quilting. I want to note that this laser holder, you can use it with your laser. It's on this side if it's doing a design outward and your laser holder will be flipped to the other side if it is focused on your needle. And this is um, kind of a different way to mount it on the side of your machine, but it should allow for the newer APQS Gen 4 models to be able to get further back um, towards their bars without having the, the laser interfere with that. I am showing you this on a, a 2016 uh, Legacy model. So I'm going to get back to quilting. Y'all check this out on boldnotionquilting.com.